very close in color, so it kind of all blends together. The reason I ask that question, as you know, we have we to kind of earthquake situation. Yes, yeah. Designed uh, the most current. Yep, sure. Without cracking the uh, It might crack, but it should not fall out. Well, the, the height limit in the C3 zone along Market Street on the north side is almost, I think it's almost consistent all the way along the stretch of Market Street at 120 feet, all the way in, down to the third or something, all the way up to uh, eight or nine. And then it starts to get a little taller as you approach uh, Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah. On the south side, the building's a little shorter. That's the, the same height as the work of the existing building, the work of now, right? Yes, yeah, same height as the work street. So, kind of in line with the existing building. Yes. So, we'll go to our next presentation, which is 948, 952 Mission Street Expansion. gun buyback programs, one with uh, United Players on um, 7th and Howard, and one in the Western Edition, where we collected over 202 guns, including four automatic weapons. Um, and that was just this past year, both those events happened, and uh, in, uh, with the mayor's office and uh, uh, the Brady campaign, uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of community groups, South of Market community groups. It was a really successful event. Uh, I think it was about maybe about six months ago we did the one in on Howard Street, and then after there was a triple homicide in Hayes Valley, uh, we took uh, we did a second round of fundraising, and we put on a second one kind of in response to the to the homicide. So, um, in addition to that, uh, we also do uh, you know support the United Players program. This summer we employed six kids, or we helped them. They employed six kids, but we helped raised money for it, we donated money to that program, um, and as well as after school activities. And uh, we've got a great partnership with that group in particular, but we also work with other groups. And if we're solicited to uh, donate money to any community fund, our, our record is that we, we're pretty much 100% in support of our community. So um, we feel that uh, we've done our part really giving back and, and fitting in and working hard to be a part of the community. The reason we're here tonight is because we have a we have a hearing before the planning commission. I think it's on the the, the 13th of August. And what the what the proposal is is to expand the dispensary. If you go to page three, this is what the dispensary currently looks like today. As you can see it's it's really beautiful. Uh, we put a ton of work into it. We made a ton of improvements to the space. Um, and on page well. If you look at page two, you can see this is right now the current meeting space that we want to incorporate into the dispensary. And so basically right now what we're using this space for is we have meetings there, community meetings. Uh, the Brownie Mary Democratic Club meets there every month on uh, second Thursday. You know, Tony there has uh, joined me for a number of meetings. And what we'd like, and also patient services. 
And so what we'd like to do is be able to incorporate this into the dispensary so that the patients that are using it can medicate in the space. And it's part of the dispensary as opposed to being a separate facility where you have to walk out to the street and go back in. We just want to build a door so we can go straight through, use it for meetings, use it for patient services. Uh, so that's, if you look at the floor plan on the fourth page, you can see that's basically, this is the existing dispensary on the bottom. We want to incorporate this meeting space, flex room, multi-purpose space into the dispensary. And uh, like I said, that'll just allow us to offer more patient services through the dispensary instead of having it as kind of like a redhead stepchild, if you will, you know, this, this small room that isn't really part, neither here nor there. Um, the other portion of our application is to allow on-site consumption. When we first went through the permit process, there was a lot of concerns from the neighborhood. There's the mental health center that's on the corner. They were developing a hotel right next door, immediately next door. Uh, a lot of people in the neighborhood had never had exposure to medical cannabis dispensaries and thought, assumed the worst, that we were gonna be a magnet for crime and we were gonna create this huge nuisance in the community. So we actually scaled back the initial proposal to permit only the, the, the first half of it. And we told, at the time, we told the planning commission and the planners that we'll hold off for a couple years, you know, so you'll have an opportunity to judge us on our record after a couple years of, oper of, of operations. If you see that we're providing a good benefit, good service for our community, and you know, we have a good track record, we're gonna go back in and we're gonna apply for an expansion with on-site consumption and to allow you know, a meeting space on use of the full facility instead of just using half the facility. And so after two and a half years of operations, we think we've done a great job and we have a ton of support. And so we're gonna go back in and try to expand now to allow on-site on vaporizing and consumption and also have that, that flex space. So um, the final part of the permit, which is a little intriguing, and is, is, would, would probably be exciting for any medical cannabis patient in the room, but I, I don't know if anybody is or not, but the city of San Francisco allowed, uh, in the code, when they permitted dispensaries, they allowed two dispensaries to have extended hours permits, basically, up to 24 hours. And no dispensaries in San Francisco have been granted that right yet. Uh, only certain dispensaries qualify. You have to be located in a, in a downtown commercial district and you have to have um, access by public transit, by OWL service, 24-hour public transit service. So as we were going through the process, we thought about it, we discussed it amongst ourselves, and we figured, you know what, might as well add that in as part of our part of our application. We'll see what the demand is. We don't quite know. It's uh, Nobody's done it before, but it's something that we want to look, look into doing and, and offering extended hours to the patients. The, uh, the hours were already extended to the maximum amount, which is, I think, 10 p.m., is that right? 10 p.m., yes. 10 p.m., and, and there's people coming in at 10 p.m. So uh, once, if this is approved, we're gonna probably open until 11 or 12 and see if, if people are still using the service and if, if there's a need for it in the community. If there isn't, the existing hours, which are 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., I think 363 days a year, um, are sufficient, but if there's a need in the community for extended hours, we're willing to provide that service. Um, Nate, here's you want to talk a little bit about the security that uh, yeah. we have now. One of the things that we take a lot of pride in is is our security um, inside the dispensary as well as what our security's done on the outside of the dispensary. Um, we have a private security team that we hire, which is a private group called Top Flight Security. They do a lot of um, when dignitaries come into town and stuff, they do a lot of their personal security, so these guys are all very, very well trained. Um, and then what we also have done is we've added security people outside of our dispensary, especially during what we consider high, cr high crime uh, times. A lot of people walking by, breaking windows. I don't know if you guys have ever had your windows broken and things snatched, but uh, it does happen a lot. And since we've been putting people outside, the window smashing has gone down almost to zero during the times that we're doing it. So we're really trying to, as well as also any kind of petty theft. Um, a lot of people have been being held up at one of the bus stops down there. We've added some security and just having a, a presence outside has thwarted a few um, a few of the snatch and grabs. So, um, you know, we really wanna make sure that we have uh, people inside the dispensary, outside the dispensary, and then inside our new, or hopefully with our new area, we'll have one person inside the, the room at all times, as well as one person at the door. So security will always be handled and we take that very seriously as we want our patients to medicate and be safe inside as well as outside. Who qualifies uh, to be in your, to come to this country and to enter, get it properly? I'm sorry? You would like to enter. 
into the program. So you just need a you need a, a, a recommendation from a doctor, and uh, and any any type of a um, of an ID, a form of ID, and you're in. Did we get a Medicare on COVID fifteen? I don't believe they. Not yet. Nope. Not yet. Hopefully soon. Someday. Um, we have we have levels, of, you know, from kind of a top shelf to a bottom shelf, and um, you know, I mean, in terms of a pricing, we have stuff as cheap as three two dollars. So you know, from two dollars to sixty is kind of the range. So I mean, you know, do you and want to be expensive? Be expensive? Or do you want to be, you know, at the bottom? You know, either we but there's medication for everybody. Would the doctor prescribe um, the level of uh, uh, medication? You can see on the General, on generally a doctor will give you a prescription and then give you the individual uh, kind of your marching orders in terms of you know what based on your maladies what you need to take. Um, if you have anxiety, they may say a high CBD uh, thing, or maybe stay away from sativa dominant. Uh, flowers, uh, which would help you know raise anxiety and probably get you more into an indica thing. Or if you have emphysema or you have problems with your lungs, there are edible options. There are tinctures. There are sprays. So really, we can we, we can pretty much handle you uh, you know whatever whatever's going on. So all the the edibles and are all um, have dosage on the packaging. So you know how strong they are, and um, all the cannabis is lab tested for. Um, you know, uh, mold and mildew, pesticides. pesticides, fungus, as well as has the levels of THC and CBD in it. So you know how strong it is. The CBD provides more of a, less of a, of a, of a high, but an actual more medical side. Yeah. So you can, you know what it is that you're smoking. Everything's been tested and it's measured. And it's not, I mean, it's science, but you know, marijuana research and development is just in its, its baby right now. It's just starting. But everything that's available in the marketplace, we provide all of the data that we have. Um, can I get a copy of the screenplay? Yeah, sorry, we didn't bring the security plan, but I can email you one of them. Drop it off at my Okay, here? Okay, that's fine. And we have, I mean, we have, uh, we're not yet aware of any opposition to our plan. We've got obviously the support of all our patients, which is a couple thousand patients so far have signed our. Let our support. We of course would love to have the support of your group, and I don't know uh, how you guys out. how you guys do endorsements or you know how you take action or something. But if there is, but if I could put in a formal request to have your support, we would we would love to have your support. Um, once I get the security plan and review it, mm -hmm. um, I'll make a determination. I'll let my board go, and if it's a go, then I write it out and send it to the you. Would, yeah. Uh, if, if it's all a go, then you can write a letter and send that in. All right. And your and yeah. Yeah, and and I think with our security plan, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit. Uh, we're gonna adjust it as we go because of the after hours thing. Right now, we have our existing security plan. If we stay extended hours, it's, it's probably gonna be adjusted. We have professional consultants that are gonna work on that. That's not. I'm not a security consultant. Uh, so I do security plans for alcohol licenses all the time. Okay, well we'll show you what we got, and if you know any suggestions, we're we're completely open to any improvements we can make. Good. I, think that we had a, I just had a quick question. Yeah. Do you guys deliver and do you guys have veterans discounts? We do not deliver, we do have veterans discounts. Okay. What other kind of discounts do you have? Uh, we also do senior citizen discounts. Um, so anyone uh, over the age of 62, um, you get a discount as well as any veterans. The senior and the veteran on top of it? See, yep. what a veteran seniors. If you're a veteran senior, then you, you get, get the double. You get the double. Okay. Thank, Thank you for Thank your you service. <laughs> Good question. Okay. Well, any other questions? Anything else? Thank you. Well, we thank everyone for taking the time out of your busy Thanks, schedule guys. and giving us the opportunity. It. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thanks for okay. having And I'll drop off the security plan for you. Okay. Can I get one of those tablets? Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, put it in the you want to put it in a scrapbook? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave my card here. Thanks, I appreciate it.